Today, I am going to explain a movie about how cruel humans are and how sad the life of bulls is. Brian Litzel. This movie starts by showing us the main character, a little calf named Ferdinand. This little bull likes flowers very much. That's why he always waters them so he can feel their pleasant smell. Ferdinand has three calf friends, one called Guapo, one called Valiant, and the last one called Bones. All of them dream of being big and strong bulls, which in the future would go to the bullring to face the bullfighter, since this was the only way for the bulls to achieve glory and fame. The farm was also inhabited by a conflictive calf named Valiant, who always bothered Ferdinand because he was the only calf who did not like to fight. The big bulls appear at that time. They were the parents of the little ones and they were going to the field, because the audition is taking place there to see who was the strongest bull, that is the bull that would run in the bull ring. Ferdinand's dad is chosen as the winner and is happy because he would be the one to face the bullfighter. Then, he shares that great joy with his son and tells him that this is the day that any bull would wish for. But Ferdinand is very sad because he doesn't want his father to leave and tells him that when he grows up, he wouldn't want to become an aggressive bull. His father, who loves him very much, thinks he is still very innocent, so he promises to come back to teach him how to fight and maybe he will change his mind. Then Ferdinand's father smilingly says goodbye to him and leaves. However, as the hours passed by, which turned into days, Ferdinand's dad never came back. As the little calf was very sad and understood that his daddy would never come back, he chose to escape from the farm. And after having boarded a train and walked through different places, while the rain was pouring down, Ferdinand felt exhausted and after meeting a dog, he fainted. The next day, Ferdinand is awakened by a girl named Nina, and the calf seemed to like this girl because she was wearing a very fragrant flower on her head. As luck would have it, the calf had made its way to a florist's farm, and Nina's family was very cool, so they ended up adopting Ferdinand. Years passed and Ferdinand grew up to be a huge and strong bull, who despite his fearsome physical appearance still loved flowers. Ferdinand was especially happy that day, as a flower festival was being held in town. He obviously wanted to go, but because of his large size, the family could not take him. However, Ferdinand believed that Nina would get bored if she was alone, so he ended up going to the festival. But the problem was that he was already a very big bull and all the people watching him couldn't help but get scared. And all this got worse when Ferdinand inadvertently sat on a bee and gave a loud scream that scared everyone present. Since the police couldn't let this giant creature roam the streets, they ended up capturing him and didn't even let Nina say goodbye to him. The police took Ferdinand to the most famous bull farm in town, and it turned out that this place was the same farm where he grew up. Ferdinand, who wanted to return home, began to make sudden movements to free himself, and so they sent him to a goat, whose specialty was to calm the bulls. Then Ferdinand enters the farm where he meets again his old childhood friends and some other bulls. They all grew bigger and stronger, but none of them had Ferdinand's big size and muscles not even the aggressive bull named Valiant. The bull returns to his old room and lies down to sleep with the goat, but during the night he is visited by three porcupines who were thieves. The goat introduces them to him, and one was called Uno, the other Dos, and the other Cuatro, and if you wonder what happened to Trez, well. Since Ferdinand was a good-natured bull, he finally let the little porcupine steal from him. Later, the bull was very bored with the situation and tries to run away from the farm, but he is surprised to find that the fence is electrified. At that moment some horses appear and Ferdinand asks them for help to let him pass. However, it turns out that these horses were haughty and they tell him that only the most beautiful horses were allowed to pass. The next day, the most famous bullfighter in Spain called El Primro, arrives at the ranch in search of the strongest bull in the country to be his rival in his last bullfight. The bulls are released to show their level before El Primro, and as this was the moment the bovines had been waiting for all their lives, they tried to get the bullfighter's attention no matter what. 
the bull named Huapo fainted under the pressure of having to look into El Primero's eyes. And the matador, seeing that, was very disappointed because no bull seemed to be up to the task. He then threatens the ranch owner, telling him that he had two days to train his bulls and give him the best one. Soon after, the bulls complained to Ferdinand for not having fought during the demonstration in front of El Primero, and at that moment, everyone realizes that Guapo is happy, because he thinks he was chosen to challenge the bullfighter, but the truth is that Guapo was going to the slaughterhouse for having fainted during his presentation. At that moment, Valiant tells Ferdinand the truth because things had changed a lot since he left, before the bulls fought for glory and fame, but now they fought for survival, because if you were not a bull that was good for the bullfights, they would end up sending you to the slaughterhouse to become meat. At night, Bones was sad for his friend Guapo. Then Ferdinand talks to him and gives him his support, becoming good friends from that moment on. The next day, the bulls had to train for El Primero to find a worthy opponent. One of the bulls talks to Ferdinand and secretly tells him that he wasn't really watching anything. Ferdinand then runs his tongue over his hairy eyes, solving his problem, and the two of them become good friends. Then the goat tells Ferdinand that he must learn to fight in order to survive, and explains that this is not just about sudden movements, but that he must see the fight as if it were a dance. At that, the horses who were nosy, overhear him and approach him to mock him, because for them a bull was incapable of dancing. However, Ferdinand shows them that he could dance. Then, the horses show Ferdinand what dancing really was. But the bovine's two new friends were not far behind and joined him in the dance. And as the bulls were still at a disadvantage, the bull called Maquina arrives and shows them all his tastiest steps. In the end, the horses are defeated for being so uncoordinated, and the bulls, who were now happy, become more and more friends. But Valiant appears and tells them to stop fooling around since they were bulls and they should only think about the bullfights since the only way for a bull to survive is to beat the matador. All the bovines understood that Valiant was right, so they went to train with the only hope of beating the matador. Ferdinand, who had lived a happy life, knows well that this is not true, so he convinces his goat friend to escape from the ranch. To accomplish this feat, Ferdinand enlists the help of the porcupines and these little guys prove to be very clever. In the process of escaping, Ferdinand unwittingly reached the room where El Primero was staying and realized something terrible, that all the bulls that confronted El Primero had a sad end because they ended up being annihilated, including his father. Ferdinand knew that if he left the other bulls at the ranch they would end up dying in the same way. So the bull goes to his friends and tries to reason with them telling them that no bull could beat the matador because the bullring was another kind of slaughterhouse. Then Valiant gets angry and tells Ferdinand that he is a coward, but Ferdinand tries to make them flee and Valiant gets tired and tries to fight him. During the battle they clash their horns and Valiant, who was training so hard, ends up with a broken horn and all this was seen by El Primero, who chose Ferdinand to be his opponent. And the worst thing was that Valiant was taken to the slaughterhouse since he had only one horn and was no good as a fighting bull. Since Ferdinand was chosen, his friends wanted him to leave. But he refused to go alone because he wanted to go with everyone, including Valiant. As a result, they all made a plan to lock up the horses, leaving the way free to the slaughterhouse, where Ferdinand finds Valiant and tells him that they must flee. But Valiant does not want to leave. He feels humiliated by everything that happened because without his horns, he could not find meaning in his life. Ferdinand tries to reason with him and tells him that fighting is not the only thing a bull can aspire to. At that moment, Ferdinand listens to his friend Guapo as it turns out that he had not yet been killed. So he tries to help him and inadvertently sets off the alarms. And when the crusher was about to do its job, Valiant comes to his senses and manages to save Guapo. The three bulls manage to escape from the slaughterhouse and arrive at the ranch to lead together, and the most surprising thing is that the porcupines were driving the truck. Then, the ranch owner and El Primero realize that the bulls were escaping, so the matador orders the owner to go after the bovines. The small truck tries to flee through town and a chase ensues. At the end of it all, the truck did not hold up and the bulls had to run away. They reach a train station from where they flee without any problems, 
Ferdinand, who is the strongest, decides to sacrifice himself to stop the ranch people and ends up being captured. This whole event became famous. Ferdinand was known in Spain as the most dangerous bull ever seen, and because of this, he is presented as the last rival of El Primero. And thanks to the news, Nina learns that her beloved bull would run in the bullring. The day of the duel came and the bullring was completely full. Everyone wanted to see El Primero take down the biggest and most aggressive bull. When the battle began, Ferdinand did not want to lend himself to the dirty game, so the matador began to sting him to make him aggressive. Ferdinand at one point managed to take the bullfighter's cape, and when he tried to take it back, the only thing he managed to do was to make a fool of himself in front of the crowd. The angry bullfighter returned to the field with some banderillas and tried to hurt the bull. But Ferdinand using the cape, got away with it making the matador even more furious, and at one point, he hurt Ferdinand awakening his fury and his brute strength. The bull was about to seriously hurt the matador, but just at that moment, he stepped on a flower, which reminded him that he really was a peaceful bull. Ferdinand made the decision not to fight and walked away from the matador to show him that he was in peace. However, El Primero took this action as an offense and drew his sword to finish off the animal. Ferdinand realized this, and sat down to show the matador that he would not participate in this game of violence. Then, when El Primero was about to give him the final thrust, all the people present began to whistle and shout for his pardon. Ferdinand had won the hearts of the people, and since El Primero realized that the love of the people exceeded his desire to annihilate the bull, he decided to leave Ferdinand alive and left. Nina had just arrived and went out to the arena to embrace her bull, and just at that moment, the bull's friends arrived. As it turns out they didn't plan to leave him alone either. Days flew by and we see that all of Ferdinand's friends arrived at the flower farm to live with him. And this is how the film ends, showing us how a bull who liked flowers did not continue with his destiny of violence and ended up being happy with his friends.